Hey everybody, uh, good afternoon. Uh, this is Jay here and welcome to my live stream. Uh, today we're going to uh, color a page for Pinion and the Seven Mountains number four. Uh, so before we go ahead and do that, I'd just like to remind everybody that um, as you can see on your screen, uh, our campaign is live on Kickstarter. At the moment, we have 146 backers. Um, so thank you so much, everybody, to those who have already pledged uh, for the campaign. And we have 22 days to go uh, to make Pinion's journey. Um, no, um, proceed. So, yeah, I would like to invite everybody to support our uh, campaign. Um, this is going to be a great story. You guys will love it. Um, so, uh, going to the live stream uh, today. Let's see. Okay, you're seeing my screen right now. Let's see. So here we are. Um, this is page four of Pinion the Seven Mountains by Michael Lavoy. Uh, last week he live streamed this. It's a very beautiful page here. Um, so coloring for this page. Uh, when I get Mike's page, I look at it and I and I admire it because like he draws really well, very realistic, and his layouts are are clear. Um, so, like everything else uh, in in comics, uh, we start with reading the script, uh, and then this is page four, so it just follows uh, from uh, third page where they climb up, and then they came. In, uh, they arrived to this uh, monastery in the clouds. So the first thing I do when I start a page is I make a copy of the line art, which, um, which I do. Uh, select all, and then I control C or copy. And then um, uh, I make another channel and I paste the line art there and then I convert the file into RGB so we can start coloring um, and then the way I set up my line art uh, there's uh, different ways to do it but the one that I'm used to is that uh, I create a new layer then I load uh, the selection of the alpha one, which is our line art, and then I click the invert, and then OK. So there's like all these marching ends on the page. And then I go to edit, fill. I fill it with 100% black. And now we have our uh, line art separated in a different layer, and it's transparent. And then I set it to multiply, I lock it, and then I fill, um, I fill the back, uh, the layer below it, uh, different color. Um, so we have our line art set here. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to do some flaps. Flatting is um, I'm separating all the panels, all the characters uh, by filling them with their normal colors. Uh, so I get a selection tool. I, I get this marquee tool. I start uh, from general to uh, very specific. So first we divide, uh, we divide the panels. Uh, Divide the panels first. So 
separate them. Okay, by the way, guys, if you have any questions for me, just post it in the comments um, and I'll answer it uh, whenever I can. So why do we do flats? We do flats uh, so it's easier to select the elements. So for example, I get a, a, the one tool here, which selects the uh, colors, uh, the same colors. So for example, I select this one. See, um, I select it and it just, it just selects the color that I want to select. And then, like I said, uh, I do it from general to specific. So, for example, we're just going to, for our purposes, we're going to uh, do this uh, panel two here. Let's let's finish the flats for this figure, this is character branding. So, for example, I just select this figure first. Then I fill it with a color that I want for him, just to separate him. But just to say, okay, that's his color, and then we fill his hair with a flat color. His hair. What we're really doing is just so uh, we're just separating like the details of uh, the page separating the character from the background and then especially for this page there's uh, his face so we're gonna separate his hair his eyes so let's see so you do that right here. Okay. Face his eyebrows. As you can see, you may wonder uh, why isn't why are the colors not covering the line art? As you can see, uh, we're really working under the line art. See, if we remove this eye here, it's just really flat colors. And then the line art is on a separate layer, so we don't touch it. So let's see. Okay, let's do his eyes. Now, maybe let's make this a uh, different color. So it's easier to select later on. Select his teeth. Okay, and then we select the map he's holding. I'm just really doing this uh, very loosely. Just, just to show you guys the process. Okay, so uh, um, let's 
say let's do the super okay that, that, that should be tent here go uh, we got panel two plated um so the purpose of the flats is that whenever i select a specific area uh, it's easier for us to color those areas because um, it separated them our one tool and all our selection tools and uh, can read the pixels there so for example if we're done with this one and then we go like flat um, especially panel one and panel three when we're done with them you will have something that looks like this so we have our pages um, now we have our page set up we have our flats now we are ready for rendering which means really putting in light and shadows the fun part of coloring so before I do that um, uh, I create a new layer and I just fill it with a uh, white uh, let's say fill it with white and oh no where's the colors well the colors is just underneath um, what I'm gonna do is is establish uh, establish my shadows, um, so we can have the uh, uh, um, we can set up the light sources. So here's what I gotta do. Since the shadow is from the top. I uh, may just paint in a just paint in a light shadow. Um, now why am I doing this one? Why don't I just color directly? Well, I can, um, but over the years, uh, coloring comics uh, day in and day out, month to month. We need to uh, establish a system wherein we can work efficiently. Why am I setting the shadows? So later on, when we color, as you will see, we uh, we don't have to guess anymore um, where the light's coming from or how we're go. Where, where we're gonna sculpt his face. So I put in the shadows first. And I just try to examine uh, the light sources. Uh, for example, here. Again, I'm doing this fairly loosely, um, so I can show you. Oh, that's why. Sorry, 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 sorry. sorry. So that is right here, and then on the top, uh, in this first panel here. Our focus is on the. Uh, this one, uh, this uh, monastery up in the skies, uh, the one a high mountain. So, um, and then we have our characters here. There's Finian, there's Merwin, there's Brennan, there's Spear. So I see, and here's what I'm gonna do. Um, let's see, let's use a quicker brush to do this. Okay, so. We're just really roughing out uh, the shadow areas. So 
for example, we have this here. Uh, what I'm doing is uh, we want to frame the, the, the church there, the monastery, because we want our readers, uh, upon seeing the page, their eyes will be led to the to the church here. So we're actually framing uh, framing that church and then bathing our main characters here in shadows. So for example, if they're in the shadows uh, like that, we know uh, the shadows uh, serve as a, uh, as a frame and then the rim, the highlights here, the white areas uh, sort of, they become like arrows that point towards the center here. And then also uh, in, we put shadows on the church monastery to give it dimension so where the light may be hitting so for example we have all our shadows set up for this page we will have something that looks like this so we have our shadows here. And then what I do next is that I duplicate the line art. Uh, and then I set, uh, and then I duplicate again. And I put it on, on top. And our shadows, our shadow layer, I set it to multiply. Boom, automatically you have your um, shadows carved out for you. So that removes uh, us guessing where the light is gonna hit. And then I'm the, the, the copy of the flat layer, I set it to color, to give color to our shadows. So it won't be like a dull gray, a blend. And then I flatten it. So there, uh, we now have our shadows, and then we can paint. So remember our flats layer? So let's say, um, let's, uh, let's paint Brennan's face here for our purposes. Okay, let's, uh, let's go get his, let's go select. See, that's the purpose of our flats. Uh, it helps us select the areas we want to color. And then I I create a new layer and I click this uh, like sort of like a Japanese flag here. And then that creates a mass. What the mass does is it keeps us, uh, it, it just keeps, uh, it keeps our coloring on the areas we have selected. So as you can see, the red areas are not gonna be touched by any color. So now we can paint. So because um, we have already, uh, we have our shadows, uh, it's easier now for us to color uh, our highlights. Uh, we have uh, our page three here. Normally, uh, because I've already colored it previously, uh, I just get a sample. I just sample uh, his colors here, so we can make our um, our flat uh, our coloring easier and uniform. So, for example, I select uh, these highlights here. 
Mm. Okay, let's select our highlights here. Where the light is uh, hitting. And then I give it a really light uh, really light um, uh, radiant and then I just sort of build from there you know uh, this is the fun part uh, it's it really does feel like you're painting you're building your uh, you're building your highlights you're sculpting the face We have a space right here. And then, uh, and oh, uh, okay, I'm gonna sample again like a shadow color for his, just to, uh, so for example, his nose here. I always just go back there and like um, just play with play, play with color it like building your uh, just shading it uh, open the face mm, let's see I may even want to make it a lot more darker but just really like just to what I like about uh, and I, I use a uh, light pencil to build this for sort of like watercolor effect uh, on a very low opacity. I'm gonna build from it. So for example, so as you can see, um, it's looking really cool now. Looking really cool. And I just keep on rendering everything here. Ah, uh, space, and then that takes a lot of time. Uh, normally, for me to color a page, it takes me like uh, at least two hours, and sometimes uh, two to four hours, my average. And on a given day, on a good day, I can finish three pages. Uh, okay, let's see. Okay, let's say we're coloring his, his hair and his beard. Okay, just select there. I'm just following um, how Mike uh, established. Uh, I'm just following Mike's uh, inks, inclines here. Uh, where he put the shadows, the you know, the texture of the hair. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, I'm gonna get an airbrush, a soft airbrush. And I'm just gonna uh, select a lighter color. Where they are, it's really light. We don't want to overdo it because uh, we want to build all these uh, textures um, slowly. So, for example, this beard and then shadow area here. We want to because uh, if you have a warm light, uh, your your the bounce light, uh, your ambient light uh, is cooler. So, like for example, here I put in a cooler purple. For example, um, the bounce light. Um, oh, that's too much. 
see we'll go more blue. I just give it an adjustment. Uh, that's how it was. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, uh, soft, uh, a harder brush. But, uh, where am I? I'll just use my uh, pencil tool. Then I his right here. Of course, we want him to like pop out from this. Uh, from this. I'm gonna put a rim light on the edges of his face. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see a hard brush. We set it to screen. And now like, we're really not creating spaces. Talking to it on his face. Uh, give up the contours there. Oh, before we forget, uh, let's just say we put a we put a clouds here. Um, uh, I have a lot of brushes over the years, brushes that I bought, brushes that I created, and I have a, I have this brush here, which is really good. Let's give us a, let's just clouds, right? Set the screen. For example, um, Okay, so let's say we rendered everything here. We will have something that looks like this. Boom, it's awesome, awesome. Beautiful page by Mike. Uh, so now we look and see what effects we're, we're gonna add in. So you can see, um, the church here is our four focal point. Um, we've colored all the characters here, and then you can see the shadow areas. We painted them with. Uh, uh, we modeled them using color colors like blues. And then the the rim light leads our eyes, you know, this way, going. Uh, going to the church we got it. so and now what we're going to do is um, do some effects and then normally I just look at this and see if um, just check if the you know check if our eyes are really going to going into what we want to focus on. So in this case, um, for example, uh, this girl here, I think um, her face guts uh, pops out too much from the background here. And then I just, and then this guy here, here, I, I feel that his face is also um, I just want to make his face cooler so they recede back into the background and what happens is that for example we put a cool color there 
oh no, it's their blue now. But then you set that layer mode to darken and then just reduce it. Because the darken just, uh, just puts color on like the light, the, the highlights. So as you can see, example that you can for example in this panel here with cool gear with, with without uh, cooling his face here um, he just I feel like our eyes but we want the reader to immediately look at uh, our speaker here this is Brennan and I Think I colored him too bright, so I cooled him a little bit, so that when you look at the page, your eyes immediately, uh, the focus immediately goes to Brennan here, and then we put some highlights on the edges here called the rim lights, so that um, uh, again uh, it pushes our eyes to look. Uh, towards the direction of the rim light and then leads us to our main figures here, Finian and Merwin. Same way here, without without adjust, adjusting her skin tone, uh, she jumps out uh, uh, more than what we want. So cooling her down, uh, makes her recede more into the background just enough uh, and then our eyes now go to this main uh, church here so if you have everything ready everything's cool everything's good now we do some effects the first effects i the first effect i do is the color hold. Color hold is a color hold is a line. The black line um, knocked out and replaced with uh, color. So, for example, this is a color hold, um, and this is a color hold. So that's what we're gonna do now to this page. So I make a new layer. I uh, so I make a copy of the line art, and then I drag this line art to the to the Japanese flag here, and then I click the main layer, not the mask. And then I delete everything there. And then I set this to normal. So so let's see. Let's let's do some color knockouts here or color holds. Um, these are the mountains in the background. And we need uh, we're knocking out the black lines and replacing it with uh what happened? What's going on? Wait. Uh, uh, let's see. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Oh. Uh, Uh, no, 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 let's see. Okay, here's the line art here for this one. So, up. Uh, there you go. Um, so we call a hold the background so they are pushed back. 
their uh, pushback to the so what we're doing here is we are mimicking atmospheric perspective uh, uh, when objects are are farther um, they tend to get they tend to blend into the colors of the background um, okay what else what else what else what are we explaining? okay say we're gonna back out of these lines here oh, oh. Sorry, guys. Just to push the details of the building back. And see, we knocked out this uh, grass field here, these trees. We, we, we replaced the black line art. In color just to give it more a more um, make it more realistic uh, and it pushes it back really to the background so we we hit that the field and then here we're gonna knock out his uh, Faces he uh, his the lines on his face. Yes, uh, so oh, no, not the eyes, not the eyes. So, for example, and then his eyeballs. Uh, okay, let's say let's darken it a bit. So yes, uh, so we've done our holds. And then the next thing we do is we create a new layer that we set to screen mode. And that's how, that's the most, uh, that's the, that's, that's the common way of uh, painting in glows. See, that's awesome. That's, it's too yellow. Wow. Let's get a bit. And we put some uh, shine in his eyes. Okay. And let's say we just put a little bit of shine. That's too bright uh, because you know, it's just enough. Okay. It's to give it that special. So now um, we're pretty much done. So when we're finished with this one, you have something that looks like this. As you can see, uh, Mike told me to put in some clouds at the back uh, to make it more dramatic. Uh, and then as you can see, I also did some color holes on the edges of the face here. I knocked out the black lines on this map here. And yeah, that's pretty much it. And um, when we're done with this one, I normally send it to Mike for review or to our, to our writer Phil. And then when it's done, uh, I flattened this image, convert it to print ready format, CMYK. And then I send it off to our letterer, uh, James Reed, to put in all the word balloons and the dialogues and the captions and the narrations. And yeah, and Next thing you know, you hold the whole book in your hand, print it. So 
yeah uh, so before we close um let's go again to our opinion let's see so this is our kickstarter page okay we have 146 backers uh, we have 22 days to go uh, so yeah i would like to invite you to uh, support this campaign uh, let's continue opinions journey let's help him find a fabled sword of saint michael and i hope uh i hope you learned a lot i, I hope you learned something uh, from my process of uh, coloring a page then after this page we go to the next page until the book is done so yeah that's it uh thank you so much for uh joining me and in, in this live stream um i hope you learned something and uh, if you have any questions just post it on the comments uh below and i'll answer them um, i'll answer them there so yeah thank you so much guys and uh have a good day have a good week and i'll see you on the next live stream bye all right